Good evening, saints. Good evening, uh, children of God. We want to welcome you again tonight or this evening in the name of Jesus. We are so happy that you are joining us once more. And we are going to talk about the faith principles that we have started some few weeks back. And I want to believe that God is going to help us even tonight. Tonight, I, wanna, I, want, I want us to talk about a certain topic that I mean you all know, but I will explain each and every point that I think is so fit for this communication tonight. And I want us to start off by appreciating you once more for joining us. Number two, for commenting or talking to us. We do have people who are following us, who are joining us. Some of them are even communicating with us through telephones and stuff like that. And we really appreciate you. May God bless you. And may you never get tired to do so. We improve because you are doing your job also. Tonight, I want us to start from the book of Second uh, Thessalonians, chapter number one. And therein we extract verse number three only. Chapter number one of second book of Thessalonians, we read verse number three. It goes like, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of everyone of you all abounds towards each other. It's a beautiful rendition by this wonderful man, Paul, who was, I mean, with Sylvanus during this time in Timothy. And as they were writing this letter, they started by admonishing the people for the job they had been doing. And I also want to start right there. I want us to talk today on the topic that says faith growth or a measure of faith. You can decide which one to take, but I prefer to talk about faith growth. Uh, anything that lives should grow. And if it doesn't grow, it causes panic to the people who are the founders or the creators of that thing. I believe God, you know, is, is disturbed by us not growing in our faith. But the moment we start to grow in faith, we make God happy, we please God. We take of him to a point where he releases blessings upon our lives. And some of these blessings come upon us, some of them come behind us, some of them overtake us. Then go and report to God that these people are doing a very good job, they are growing in faith. And tonight, I want us to start right there. Number one, I want you to understand that faith must grow anything that does not grow causes discomfort to the founders or to the parents imagine a child who is uh, according to birth date the child is seven years old and the child can't even crawl can't even eat on him I mean, uh, uh, alone or, or, or himself he can't feed himself so it, it causes panic to the parents and we don't want such things to happen Hence, we have got these faith principle sessions where we are teaching each other about uh, faith and how can we grow our faith. How is it possible to grow your faith as an individual? It is possible. You can do it even at home alone. And that is what I want us to do. The moment you do it at home, you will translate that into the energy that you have when you go to church. Now, number one, I want us to talk about uh, growing faith. One of the things that God wants us to see doing is to grow our faith. Our first, first, first faith growth will be the faith that grows. Faith must grow, must not remain stagnant, must not remain dormant. It must grow to a level where it can be used and it can yield better results or better fruits in our lives. Now, I want you to understand that faith should grow. Now, what does this mean? It means faith should germinate. How does faith germinate? It germinates 
by the word of God. Once you have got the word of God and you read it more, you talk about it more, you memorize it, you also uh, meditate upon the word, your faith will start to grow. Your faith will start to migrate to another level. You move from the level of hearing the word only and receiving faith to growing faith. Your faith should grow. And how can it grow? You need the more of the word. More of the word will change you from having faith to growing faith. And growing faith pleases God because very soon that faith that is growing will give birth to fruits. Faith lives. Faith is not just something that is dead. Faith is never dead. It's alive. Faith lives just like we live. And faith can die if it is not well nurtured. So now I want us to understand that we have got a duty to do. One of the things to do is to have more of the word of God. Once you have got more of the word of God, you end up growing your faith and your faith should grow. Anything that does not grow causes panic. We don't want God to panic about us. We don't want God to regret about us. And God can also regret if our faith does not grow to a level where we move mountains, just like other people in the Bible who lived to move things, to change things. Growth in your faith will always please God. We need to move from I had to I have seen. Faith must grow to a level where you don't just depend on what you are being told. You need to see, to experiment, I mean to experiment, to experience, to encounter, I mean faith in action in your life. And once you have got such, we will say your faith is growing. We need to move from I heard to I have seen. So many people keep on saying I've heard, I've heard. Some of them will say, I heard my, pa I heard my pastor saying one, two, three. I heard my bishop say one, two, three. Or my, my prophet said one, one, two, three. We need to grow to a level where we experience, where we will encounter, have an encounter with the word. And the word translates into your, your growing faith. And your growing faith will allow you to hear what God says to the church. Because God does not speak only to the pastors. God does not only speak to the prophets, bishops, teachers of the word of God and, and, and pastors. It, it, faith can grow to a level where God speaks to you individually. And when you get to church on a Sunday morning, you will find that whatever God is going to talk about, God will have spoken to you about. Because God can speak to anyone who grows his or her faith. Move from maybe to God shall do it. When your faith is growing, you will move from probability or doubting about something to it shall happen. When you grow your faith, when your faith is growing, you no longer depend on maybe it will happen. You don't speak such language because your language changes. Once we say your faith is growing, it means even your language must change. Your language should change change should alter from maybe to God shall do it, which means you create laws when you've got faith. When you believe in something, when you want to achieve something, think about it as if you have already attained it. That is the level of growth your faith should venture into. There are so many avenues that we can get into to prove that I mean our faiths are growing. But we need to understand that it starts with a person, then it goes to the church. And just imagine a church where each and every member has grown in faith or has got, I mean, signs of growing faith. Then we speak like God shall do. I'm telling you, our church would be a different church if all the people had migrated from maybe to God shall definitely do it. Move from being told to doing. A lot of people whose faith is growing, they no longer just depend on being told. They depend also uh, on doing. They, I mean, they do things. They always have ch chance and time to do what? To sit down and do what the word says. A lot of people will grow 
um, especially when they start to, to, uh, to, to take the word of God as it is and apply it as it is. Now, I want us to understand the following. Growth comes through reading. If you don't read the word of God, you are not going to grow. You need to sit down, read the word of God, memorize it, also recite it. Apart from reciting it, also meditate on it. Pray about the word of God. You, you cannot grow if you don't have the word of God. You grow your faith when you have the word of God. You grow by reading the word of God. How can you get the word of God? You can watch on TV. You can read. You can have tapes. Those old style, I mean, styles can help you grow your faith. You must have tapes, you must have CDs, you must have songs, you must have things that are more of Christian literature to read and to memorize. Sometimes recite them, you will see your faith growing. That is the first type of uh, uh, levels of maturity in your faith. Apart from that, I said that you need to be the reader of the Word of God, you must also be the listener. You must have a spiritual ear to listen to the word of God. Apart from that, you must also apply. What the word of God says, do it. Whatever the word of God says, do it. And if you do that, a miracle shall start to manifest in your life. Remember what Mary, the mother of Jesus, said when she unleashed him unto ministry uh, during the wedding in Cana of Galilee. She said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And immediately after they had done that, water changed into drinkable wine. And the party went on and they enjoyed even more because they said the taste of the wine that Jesus created on that day was more sweeter than the one that was created before the wedding. So now we need to understand that we need to apply the word. Apart from applying the word, we need to pray the word. If you don't pray the word in your prayer, you must have verses that you recite. Recite the verses and speak the verses as you are praying. And what you do the changing. Apart from that, we also need to understand that we need to pray on the word. We pray the word and also pray on the word. We pray the word of God. We need to be full of the word. If you want your faith to grow, don't have stories. Don't have... I mean, um, Zanzi magic movies only. Have the word of God. Be filled, be saturated of the word of God. And I want you to understand that your faith can grow. And may you grow your faith in this season. When all things are looking gloomy, you need to grow your faith and you yield results and also reap the rewards of growing faith. Number two. We need to speak about growing faith, it's fine. We need to speak about having faith, it's fine. But we also need to grow our faith from growing faith to great faith. That is found in the book of Matthew chapter number 8. I want to read this one, verse number 10. Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 10. I'll read for you quickly, so don't worry about that. Okay. It says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. The Israelites were known to be people who were full of faith, who believed in God. That's the reason why the Sadducees, the scribes, and the Pharisees were so much eager, they were so zealous to serve God, serving God with ulterior motives, of course. But when Jesus landed, he walked on earth and he did a lot of miracles by faith in God, his Father. Now, the faith was, I mean, was now cascaded to the people he was mingling with every day. And on this day, the centurion or this guy who was uh, having 100 people under him as soldiers um, said to Jesus, You don't have to come to my house, but you can send a word and my servant shall be healed. And indeed, after Jesus had sent the word, it happened. That's the reason why Jesus is saying here, when Jesus heard it, he marveled, which means he shocked God. Your faith can grow to a level where it will shock God. And God will say, I never thought this one can, could do this. 
and it will be you during that time. You need to call things that are not as though they are. You need to believe to a point where God will testify. This is Jesus testifying that I have never seen such a great faith even in Israel. It was coming from a person who was a centurion who was not an Israelite. But God, in the form of Jesus, testified and said, I have never seen such a great faith. Which means we need to grow from growing faith to great faith. And when we are in the level of great faith, we are going to understand that we can call things that are not as though they are. Just like in the book of Psalm chapter number 107 verse 20, the Bible I mean, talks about God sent forth his way and it healed them and also delivered them from all, I mean, destruction, which means great faith can go beyond what we see. You can send a prayer of faith to a person who is sick, very far away from where you are, and that person shall be healed. And when that happens, you will be having great faith. We don't have to be there in order to see things manifesting. We can send the word of God, the biggest manifestation in your life, if you have got faith in God, is to send a word, a word full of power. Once you, I mean, once you say something and it happens, you manifest things that are not closer to you, but very far away from you. Just like Jesus here, yeah, he sent a word and the servant was healed. What, 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 what we call that? We call it great faith. This is not just faith, it's great faith. Jesus one day was in a what was in the Sea of Galilee, and a storm arose. I mean, arose, and then his disciples called him and they said, Master, we are about to die. Then he shouted at the storm, and the storm immediately, because of great faith, had an ear that listened to the voice of Jesus, and the storm calmed down. It means if you have got great faith, you won't keep on calling the pastors, the prophets, you won't, you won't keep on going from place to place, having your head laid hands upon by people who don't even, I mean, uh, support, supposed to lay hands upon you. You can call things and they shall come to pass. If you are sick and you have got faith that is growing and faith that is great, you can lay a hand upon your body, upon your head, and you pronounce healing and it shall come to pass. Because you have got this great faith in you. You don't have to call other people. You can do it for yourself. But you call other people sometimes because you need fellowship. I'm not saying it's wrong to call other people. But we need to grow to a level where we have got great faith and we call things to come to pass. We, I mean, we create ears to our storms and they listen to us. I wish our church can grow to a level where we have people who call things that are not as though they are. You create ears to your mountains, create ears to your, I mean, to your deserts in, I mean, and your nights and all these other things that are negative upon your life. Create ears by having the great faith. Call upon them. Let, let them know that you, you have got this great faith and things will change in your life. And I want you to understand that this man amazed Jesus. Jesus was so short. What does this mean? It means when you have got great faith, you have got authority-based faith. It is full of authority. You say things out, they command to be heard and to be followed and to be taken seriously the moment you utter them. And may we grow to that level where we've got this great faith and we say things, we call our future into the present and we start to live in our future being in the present because God is able to create such things for us through the great faith that we might have in, in him if we take this word seriously. Now, when we, have, when we have got great faith, we fear nothing. We are fearless. You speak things and expect them to, see, I mean, uh, uh, to, to come to pass. Why? Because you are fearless. You have got authority over nature. Look at this man called Elijah. He prayed that it should, it should not rain for three and a half years, and indeed it never rained. Why? He had great faith. And let me tell you this, there are so many people who Testament thing. Faith was there because the Bible is based on faith. When we say in Genesis chapter number one, verse number one, God created the heavens and the earth, it was by faith 
That I mean, um, things will come to pass. He spoke them out, then they came to pass. May you speak your future and it comes to pass. May you speak your wealth, your millions, your billions, and they come I mean, to, I mean to, to pass. May you speak growth in your business and your business I mean, grows to a point where it produces millions and, 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 and thousands of dollars. So that is pleasing unto God. We need to have this great faith. Great faith helps us to achieve things that the world doesn't understand. If we want to be extraordinary, we need to have great faith. And once we have got great faith, we know we shall rise again. Even if you can be, you will rise again because where there is great faith, things change. It's in the book of Micah chapter 7. Don't laugh at me, you're my enemy. Even if I'm down, I shall rise again. I might be walking in, but my God shall be my light. And this is what a person full of great faith does. You confess the word as it is and it comes to pass. You cannot suffer if you have got great faith because you can command the world and the world will listen to you. And we have faith as the children of God. Paul, one day they were sailing, as they were sailing in the book of Acts, as they were sailing, the ship was, I mean, was hit by serious waves and it, it was about to be, I mean, to be broken into pieces. Then Paul stood up and said, a man of great faith, where danger and where death was, he stood up and said, not even one of us is going to die. We shall all sail and until we reach the land. And indeed, all of them lived on that day. Some of them were sailing on top of the broken planks of the boat, but they eventually, I mean, uh, got to the, uh, to the dry places. And this is what your great faith can do. You can call your future. You can call your children's future. You can call your, I mean, your, your family's future into existence by great faith. Number three, I want us to read the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number one and verse number five. This is one of the verses that I love so much. And I want us to read it today. And we understand exactly what is happening with this word of God. The faith that we need to have in God will amaze the world. The world will start to understand who we are and where we are going. Even who is going with us or is moving with us. We need to know that, I mean, the world does not understand who we are until they see who is going with us or who is, move, who, who is moving with us. Number five, first, um, second Timothy chapter number one, verse number five, it says, When I call, sorry, yeah, when I call to remembrance, the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Louise, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Now, there is what we call growing faith, number one, great faith. Number three, there is what we call genuine faith, which means it is authentic, it is original, it is godly. Once you have this genuine faith, according to Paul here, Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to speak these words. And I wish these words can also live in us today and forever, where we shall understand that we are. Once we say this is genuine, it is not fake. It is just genuine. It is just like how God designed it to be for us. And it operates just like how God wanted it to be. In our lives. So now when we say it is genuine, we say there is no deception in it. You are not being crooked. You are not being robbed by anyone. This faith is genuine. It can, I mean, it can also run in the bloodline. Look at how Paul I mean, describes how it came. Uh, Eunice saw it in her mother, I mean uh, Lois. And Lois got it from God. Timothy received how did he receive it? He received it by seeing the genuineness of the faith in his mother and his grandmother. And I believe based on that alone, he also believed in the God who apportioned them this faith. And may God make it happen in your family that all your people have genuine faith in God. May you have genuine faith, the faith that is uncommon, the faith that is I mean, that, that, that has got no deception in it. 
And this is the type of faith that I want us to talk about tonight. And you are going to have the genuine faith, just like Paul said. You are going to live a life that is going to be pleasing to the people you are living with and your God. Above all, it will please you because when you have got the genuine faith, you are also pleased by what you are doing, by what you are saying, and by what you are wishing to see other people having. Now, today I want you to understand that this faith can also run in the bloodline. If you can have the genuine faith in your life, your wife will have it, your children will have it, your grandchildren will have it. Each and every person will have the type of faith in God through Christ Jesus because of you. Therefore, do not become a hindrance I mean, uh, to other people to a point where they will not receive the genuine faith. These people should receive the genuine faith based on who we are and what we have received from God. I wish each and every one in our church and beyond can grow to have growing faith, number two, great faith, and number three, genuine faith. You need genuine faith. Genuine faith does not break. Genuine faith is strong, lasts for a lifetime. You cannot say, I have faith today, then tomorrow, you, I mean, you live I mean, the things of faith according to how you have believed in the beginning. Because genuine faith lasts forever. You cannot say, I can believe God today, then tomorrow I don't believe Him anymore. Genuine faith will always make you believe God for who He is and what He says and what is going to happen. Even the glorification of His way through Christ Jesus at the end of our lives. This is what we need to know as a church. The last point that I want us to take back home today is active faith. This is found in the book of uh, James chapter number 1 verse 22. It's a very wonderful rendition here that I'm not going to read for us. Verse number 22 says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, People who have got the word of God but do not do it, they are not deceiving God, they are deceiving themselves. So for us to come back to our senses and please God and not deceive ourselves, we need to have what we call active faith. This faith is not dormant, it's alive, it's active, it helps you even in times of need. Once you have got I mean, this word of God, and you start to do it just like God says here. He says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. How many times have you uh, gone to church and you sit under a very powerful message and you don't even take the message? You heard the message, but you did not apply it. It means you are a hearer only, you're not a doer. But God is saying, people who have got active faith, they hear the word. Then they do. These are the doers of the word. You need to practice what the word of God says. If it says forgive, you forgive. If it says you love, you love. It's, if it says you must be faithful in everything, be faithful in everything. If, if, if the word of God says be a giver just like God gives. Be a giver. Do not be stingy. And this is what we call active faith. Active faith helps us because active faith comes with a lot of rewards. Once you do God does beg. And if you don't do anything, there is nothing that comes to you. It's a reciprocal type of faith. You do something for God and God does something for you. And there are times when God will not be doing anything. Don't stop doing anything for God because when God does something for you, he can be quiet for two months or three months, but the day he does something for you, it will supersede all the number of years you will have lived. And this is the type of faith that I want us to have. Be a doer of the word of God. You need to do what the word says. If the word says this, do it. Whatever the word says, don't question what the word says because the word knows you. It formed us. It changed us from, I mean, from, uh, 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 from I mean, being embryos in our, our mother's womb to children who, I mean, of, um, uh, just like who we are today. We are born today because the word translated us. The word says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Therefore, you cannot play tricks with the word of God. The word of God must grow in us. What I'm saying today is the word of God must grow in us. And people who have got active faith, this is what they do. They do what the word of God says you must do or I must do or we must do. Immediately it is spoken. 
immediately you read it and you hear about it. Immediately it comes into your mind and you start to understand it. You must do it. And once you do it, you are now called a person who is operating at the level of an active faith. And this faith is alive, is with us today. We can do it. Now that I'm preaching, whatever I've, I've talked about today, if the word of God says you must do, just go and do it. It says you must have growing faith. Grow your faith. It, must, uh, it says we must uh, have great faith. Let us grow to great faith. We must grow to another level of genuine faith. Have the faith that is based on the word of God, based on Jesus, based on the cross, based on the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the genuine faith that we have. And the last one is active faith. You are not going anywhere in life if you hear the word of God and don't do anything. The Bible talks about those ones who are blessed. The people who are blessed are those ones who hear and act based on what they've heard. Now, did you understand the word? If yes, you need to do it. Did you hear the word? If yes, you have to do it. And by so doing, you will be a person who's having active faith. The last statement that I want to give you, it remains active as we abide or remain in the word. It is not active if it is outside the alignment of the word of God. And I want you to understand, this is my last point. And before, today I will pray for you, before I pray, I want you to understand that you are going to bear fruits and you are going to show us the measurements of faith in your life. You are going to grow. We, don't, we, are, we are tired of people who don't want to grow in the things of God. We are tired of people who serve but do not believe the word of God. We are tired of people who preach the word of God but do not believe in what they preach. We are tired of people who have got situations and are being in the church but they do not believe in God inter um, intervening in their situations. We are tired of all these things. And today I want us to create a platform, a platform where we grow our faith. Faith must grow. I, I, I want to leave you with this. It is not faith until your faith grows. And the faith that you have in God only grows when you do what? When you dwell in the Word. Remain in the Word. Practice the Word. Live the Word. Preach the Word. Live the Word. Speak the Word. Practice and apply the Word in each and everything that you do. Then you will see your life changing. And I want to pray now. And pray for each and every one who is under my influence tonight. I'm not going to make it long. I'm just going to pray a few sentences and we we'll close. Father, I pray for my wonderful brothers and sisters who are under my influence tonight. I pray that we may grow in our faith. We may become better people in our faith. Our faith should grow because when faith grows, it pleases you. And when you are pleased, God, you release blessings upon your children. I pray this day. In the name of Jesus, bless each and every one of us so that we may grow from having faith to growing faith, from growing faith to great faith, from great faith, even Father, to genuine faith, from genuine faith to active faith. I pray and ask for your mercy upon our lives so that we may lead a life that you want and a life that you have designed for us as your children, as your Christians, as people who are making strides into becoming big in faith in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray and ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen.